Hello everyone and w- This is Africa and here's Tanzania. Now let's take a look, shall we? Home to Kilimanjaro, the tallest mountain in Africa, the famous Serengeti, and the islands of Zanzibar, scenic Tanzania was first inhabited long, long ago by hunter-gatherers who unsurprisingly hunted and gathered and who were then joined by migrant settlers from the north and from West Africa. Quite a lot of them, in fact. And today, over a hundred different tribes and ethnicities call Tanzania home. One of the tribes that proved very prominent was the Swahili, descendants of West African Bantu speakers who settled on the coast which became known as the Swahili Coast. This coast had long been visited for trade, but the trade began to balloon after the arrival of Persians in the 10th century who established a sultanate mixed with the Swahili inhabitants and later relinquished rulership to Arabs. The state amassed wealth via the trading of gold, ivory, and slaves. It declined and fell after the arrival of the Portuguese. Leaping ahead to 1698, the Sultan of Oman oversaw the conquest of the islands of Zanzibar. In the 1800s, the Sultan established his capital in Stone Town in Zanzibar, and his son became the first Sultan of that region. The already thriving slave trade of Zanzibar was ramped up, with Tipu Tip here, whose real name was Hamad ibn Muhammad ibn Jamaa ibn Rajab ibn Muhammad ibn Sayyid al Murjabi, and now you know why they called him Tipu Tip, proving the most successful slave trader of all, whose expeditions into the interior of Africa extracted many thousands of human beings to be sold throughout the Muslim world. Male slaves were mostly used for labor on plantations, while females were used as domestic servants or concubines in harems. Thanks to repeated British efforts, slavery was, after a lot of conflict, abolished in Zanzibar between the 1890s and 1909. Part of the aforesaid conflict involved an actual war with Britain, a war that would prove to be the shortest in history. You see, after the Sultan died suddenly, he was succeeded by his nephew, who was said to have poisoned him. The British were angered that a more pro-British successor was not chosen since the accession went against the rules of a previous agreement, the British began a bombardment and the Sultanate was defeated in 38 minutes. Meanwhile, on the mainland, the Germans had conquered Tanzania and added it to their colonial empire. There was resistance and there was rebellion and many thousands died, but German rule did not end until Germany's defeat in the First World War. Thereafter, mainland Tanzania, which in those days was called Tanganyika, came under British rule. In the 1950s, Tanganyika began pushing for independence and this was achieved in 1961. A few years later, the people of Zanzibar did some pushing of their own for independence against their Arab overlords and succeeded in their revolution in achieving their aim. Soon afterwards, Tanganyika and Zanzibar joined together to become Tanzania. President Nyerere steered the nation into socialism and China sent aid, but the economy still struggled and suffered further after neighboring Uganda, under the leadership of dictator Idi Amin, invaded Tanzania and began killing citizens. Uganda was supported by Libya dictator Gaddafi and the Palestinian PLO group. After nearly eight months of fighting, however, Tanzania was victorious. The country had received help from Ugandan rebels and Mozambique and some minor support from a few others. In ensuing years, the country worked away at recovery, and while today it possesses a low level of human development, the economy has made improvements, poverty has decreased, and tourism has grown. And we wish it all the best, but as for me, it's bye for now. Bye bye <laughs>